Hey, welcome to Eating Enlightenment. I have such an amazing, great, heartfelt, spontaneous, goose bumpy, chill, awesome conversation with Maria Scrementi coming up that you'll you'll hear about soon. Um, I think this introduction that I'm doing right now that you're listening to, I think I can just keep it pretty short. Um, we weave our conversation through self-actualization and control and authenticity and there's lots of laughs and I think we do an amazing fun conversation that I'm really um, proud even to share with you I think you'll enjoy it and um, the goosebumps come at the end so uh, without further ado uh, Maria Scrementi everyone yeah <laughs> should be fun should be fun I don't know why why do you like this field I think what attracted me to this field, Jared, was th this idea of autonomy comes up a lot in intuitive eating, um, having autonomy over your food choices. I think that was what attracted me so much was because like, I was sick of giving my power away to diet culture and not being able to like make food choices for myself. And so that was like the start for me in terms of self authoring and like having more authority in my own life and making my own decisions, like being able to make my own decisions around food was so empowering. Um, and then I didn't even know when I first got into intuitive eating, the social, social justice aspect of this work. And that's another thing that has like kept me so passionate about it. Cause I've always been passionate about social justice and standing up for self and others. And so when I learned more about like weight stigma and weight discrimination and the part that we can play in like the health at every size movement, um, that is what lights my fire every single day. Like I love, love, love the idea of autonomy with food and building a healthy relationship with food and a positive relationship with food. But I think like it's more than just individual, right? It's like societal and cultural. And we have to be talking about like the equity factor and like equal access to healthcare and things like that, or high quality healthcare. Um, so yeah, the social justice piece is like, is a huge, it's huge, is a huge reason why I'm passionate about intuitive eating. And when did you get into intuitive eating? How many years has it been? I found um, Body Kindness by Rebecca Scritchfield in 2016. And that was kind of my transition out of just doing fitness full time and personal training and group fitness and all that and into more holistic health and wellness. And so Rebecca Scritchfield opened my eyes to intuitive eating, but I didn't start doing this full time until maybe um, a year or so ago. What about you? I mean, it's funny, the timeline, I believe around 2016, I'm not quite sure, but I was working as a personal trainer yeah. in the fitness industry and my own sort of, you know, my boss one time, great guy, great guy, I love him. But the diet mentality is just so ingrained in hindsight. I think he said something like, you know, basically, hey, all you have to do is put them on a restrictive diet. If they lose some weight, they're going to be happy. And like, you, you've done your job as a trainer. Like it, it was, he's like laying out the facts for me it, and not, and not in a, you know, he said it in a straightforward, you know, straight face. Like, and I think in my heart, I personally was just like, um, like, ah, this doesn't seem right to me. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Um, and then when I heard intuitive eating and I started seeing all this diet research, it was like, oh my God, like this is, this is terrible. Um, so that's kind of how I, I, how I fell into intuitive eating. Maybe that was 2017. Yeah, that makes sense to me, Jared, because I think it was the same for me where I was like, I couldn't quite put my finger on why I had such a bad taste in my mouth around like diets and diet mentality because I never per I never wanted to participate in an official diet although I was very much like low-key dieting as most of us were at one point um but I, why didn't I want to participate in that and I it's because like now I know it's because it's oppressive but I didn't I didn't understand that at the time but still something was very off to me and, and in the fitness industry for sure it's like 
if you can get them short term, quote unquote, success, then you did your job. But it's like, I care about people's long term well being and their longevity. And like, for the rest of their life, I want them to be well. So I agree with you. I was like, I, yeah, this doesn't feel like aligned, like ethically or morally for me. Yeah, it was such a short term emphasis. I was like, how are you not seeing this? Like, how are you overlooking the long term? I don't know how the fitness industry overlooks that. It seems, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I agree with you on that. I have that. <laughs> I have that question a lot, Jared, around oh, right? the world where I'm just like, how are you not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah right like how are you like pretending or or I don't know like I don't know if it's I think you just get so immersed in diet culture they're they're not pretending they're not they're not um you know they're not really like thinking about the long term somehow or yeah but doesn't it benefit their bottom line more if it is mm-hmm. short term and then they fail and think that it's their fault and then they have to come back and spend more money with you yeah exactly there's sort of that incentive that financial incentive to uh yeah. And so you mentioned like feeling oppressed and autonomy by some of these like diets, quote unquote. Could you share? I don't know. What were you um, what were you up to? Well, I, I had a dieting mom. I always watched her do Weight Watchers and it just made me sad to watch her counting points. Like I was like, I just want you to enjoy your life. And like it seemed so obsessive. And so I think I picked up on that from a young age where I was like, I don't want to do that. That doesn't look like something that I want to participate in. But I ended up falling into like a 1200 calorie diet on my fitness pal. And it's like, that's no better. That's the exact same thing, you know? Um, But I was never able to sustain it. Like I would do it for literally like, if I could do it for two days, that felt successful. And then I would just feel like crap about myself because I couldn't continue that type of rigidity. Um, But yeah, I mean, it took me to this place of then eventually, of course, binge eating. And I know that you can relate to that, but it's like, I wish I had known that binge eating is just like, what is inevitably going to happen after you starve yourself? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, totally. I, I think back and I, I wish that as well. Like I, I just didn't know, right. You, you, you think the, the the diet culture and everything like says like hey it's it's your fault it's it's your responsibility right it's your body um and it kind of gets it it's not good where we think our bodies are a certain way and then it's our fault if we eat yeah yeah you know and i wonder what your experience is working with clients around this but i feel like that's a lot of the initial work that we have to do is to just be like no your body was just doing its job mm-hmm. by through the binge eating like there was a purpose in that and we have to like lift them out of this place of deep shame and self-blame around binge eating yeah yeah um yeah so much of this is like not forgiveness I don't forgiveness is a word that seems too too uh doesn't seem right to use right now but but I I think one of the most useful insights is when, when someone starts seeing like, Hey, I am, I'm not eating enough. And, and this is why I'm binging. Like, this is why I can't stop myself. Um, there's this like thing that I've heard where it's your breath, right? If you hold your breath, right. At some point you're going to need to release. Um, and so the analogy of binging was like, you're holding your breath out. You're like, Mm -hmm. you're not breathing. And then at some point, uh, you know, you got to inhale and you take a big inhale. And, um, you know, I, I think that's so useful, um, for, for clients, for whoever to hear to whoever to, to, um, to understand that binge eating is like throwing an apple up and having gravity, bring it back down to the surface. Yeah, exactly. And and how it's just like a natural way to compensate. Mm-hmm. And I think I like the analogy with the breath, Jared, because it shows us like other ways in which our body will work to get what it needs eventually. Like you're going to need to get there at some point. Yeah. Um, So if you can see like, okay, let's point to other ways that make sense to you in terms of how your body functions. And then let's see what your body was doing here with food. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like seeing, seeing how you're, seeing how our bodies we we aren't we aren't in total control of our bodies we we really aren't 
That's right. That's it's, right. I mean, I have this idea, like, I like talking about control. I want to hear your thoughts on control, uh, like right? control and body control. Because I, one of my clients last week said something so brilliant. Because She's mm. working on building a relationship with herself. Mm. And she's like, if I were to think about being in relationship with another person, some like some terrible relationship advice would be like, you need to control them more. You mm. need to be more controlling. <laughs> so, <laughs> like how we treat ourselves. Like I hate the idea of self-control, but I love the idea of self-care. I think that's a better question. How can I care for myself? Yeah. Yeah. Like self-control. Um, you know, there's that fine line, right? We need, we need, we need some, even the act of self-care, right? You you go on a walk. Like there's some there's some effort there. There's some I'm gonna take care of myself. Um, I don't know. Do you feel that the difference between self-care and self-control is is like self-care is making you feel better, where self-control is depleting you? You know, like you're work, 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 work. I gotta da 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 da. And self-care is like, hey, like slow down or how would you yes. differentiate? Self-control feels punitive. It feels yeah. rigid. Whereas like self-care feels so much more empowering and it feels more curious. Like how could I create space to like nurture, nourish myself in this moment rather than like, what do I need to do to um, like micromanage myself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that curious, curious is a, a great word. I love curious. Me too. I'm curious. <laughs> what does curiosity mean to you? <laughs> curiosity, yeah, I like it. Non-judgmental. Yeah, non-judgmental. I'm trying to think. What does curiosity mean to me? Yeah, it's almost like I'm apart from something. I'm like, I'm like watching. It's almost like I'm watching an, I don't know, this, I'm watching an animal outside something. I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, what are you going to do? You're, Ooh, what are you going to yeah. do? What are you going to do? Kind of like a, a little distant when I, when I feel curiosity, it's like, Oh, what are you, what are you going to do? I agree. Before you said that the word objective came to mind mm. and it's more of like that neutral observer, which can be so mm -hmm. helpful. Right? Yeah. Right. Because I, I feel like then you're not in your shame. Right. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're a little detached, you're like, oh, I'm, I, I don't know, I, I overate again, or uh, something like this. Like, what, what happened there? Like, I think that's so important to be curious about what happened leading up to a binge. Like that curiosity post binge, um, I think is is like really important. Um, really, really important. Why did I binge? Like, what, what happened? Like you know, like seeing things in patterns. And yeah, I agree. And I think that speaks to the process thinking that we learn, like, especially in intuitive eating, where it's like, okay, well, what can I learn from that event? How could I use that to help me move forward? Seeing like everything as a learning opportunity it just feels like a more adaptive perspective. Mm -hmm. And so coming back to like your autonomy I felt that was an interesting word I'm wondering how like how you link autonomy and curiosity and self-care how how these uh I will give you those three words autonomy yes. self-care and uh I forgot the third one I already I just said it what was it? curiosity curiosity uh, if I if I asked you hey how do you know how do I how do those all go together what would you say off the top of your head I want to take those that tree <laughs> self care and curiosity and like bundle it into this idea of authentic health from mm. Triple and Rush. Like authentic health to me has so much to do with autonomy and like self authoring mm. because the question is like, okay, if intuitive eating is an inside job, then what is personally meaningful for me? And what do I value, like, regardless of external belief systems, external expectations? And so, like, that, to me, that's autonomy. It's, like, mm -hmm. the ability to decide for myself. And so, mm -hmm. like, 
I feel like if we, if we operate from like a place of authenticity, then our self care becomes sustainable because mm -hmm. it, it's enjoyable for us. It's meaningful for us. We're like intrinsically motivated mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. um, curiosity. I don't know. I don't have anything to say on that. I feel like, I feel like I love it by the way, too. Um, like authenticity is understanding preferences and, and what you like and your and values and, and what, what, um, what, what feels good and resonates with you. And, um, and then, um, I feel like curiosity is maybe of the process of like looking in and figuring those things out for yourself that, that seems to fit in, you know, like what, what do I like? Right. Or I don't know what does feel good to me. I think these are important questions that unless you maybe think about them and, and get curious about them, then I don't know. If, I guess that's how you figure it out. Right. At some, it's got to start with curiosity. I agree with you. And I think Jared, ultimately, like what those that inquisitive process leads to is self actualization. Ooh, that's like a Buddha word. Yeah, I love the idea. I love it. I love it. That's day five of my emotional eating mini course, which ah. is to, to point people to all of the ways in which dieting prohibits you from self-actualizing. Because when you think about like Maslow's hierarchy of needs Ooh. and the pyramid, like you have to be able to take care of the, the bottom of the pyramid all the way up until you can reach the top self-actualization. But think about how dieting interferes with like our ability to feel safe and get our basic needs met. And it like taps out our resources and like all of these things like personal safety and security. So we can't ever reach the top of self-actualization unless we take care of all of those basic needs first. Um, so I love like, I, I love about this. Tell me why, like, tell me your thoughts on self-actualization. Well, I mean, I, I guess like on the, I was sitting in front of the, well, can you see Mr. Buddha behind me? My screen mm -hmm. is, okay, yeah, Mr. Buddha. Um, well, I love the word self-actualization. I mean, it sounds like enlightenment to me. And I yes. don't know. I don't, I don't know if I believe in like a enlightenment where all suffering is, you know, gone or, or I don't know, whatever they say about enlightenment. I don't think it's, I don't know. I don't really believe in the ultimate sense of the word, but I do believe like self-actualization is possible. I think there are like self-actualized people. Um, and and where they are uh, in tune with their heart, they're aware of who they are, um, and they are contributing to the world. They're they're you know they're in a flow each day. Maybe they're 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 going. They're they feel like of service to something bigger than themselves. Um, they're lifting up others. You know, I, I, what, why I love this food journey, uh, Maria, by the way, is like, is self-actualization. I feel like that quote, why I got into yoga was this little quote, um, the microcosm, like how you, how you show up on the yoga mat is, is like how you live your life, right? Like the microcosm equals the macro, the, the small equals the big. Um, and I feel like, you know, how you eat your relationship to food is sort of like that, right? Like how you eat food is sort of how you show up in life or, or how you, how you eat food, but also how you, how you are in your body. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's how that's, that's your life. And so, I don't know. I, I love the idea of this, I'll say spiritual, but I, I don't want to use this word in like a heavenly sort of above the world context, but just like, it, it, it leads back to self-actualization. Um, kind of a long-winded answer, uh, but anyways, yeah, no, like it's I it's uh, it really resonates with me. Um, like just like kind of getting to the deeper stuff that this is about. Yeah, exactly. And yoga is such a wonderful complement to this journey. Like I know personally, my yoga practice really mm. amplified the way that I view. Like like you said, the way we are on our mat, the way we are with food, like is but a microcosm of how we show up in the world. And I, I, I agree with that totally. Um, I always encourage my clients to try yoga, to try meditation and things like this. Cause you're right. I mean, it really does. It, it I feel like it's so aligned with, um, especially with intuitive eating. And I know, um, Evelyn Tripoli, 
came out as a Buddhist on Dan Harris's podcast, um, which I was like not surprised at all because yeah. I was that makes so much sense. Like, interesting. Do you agree? I mean, yeah. Like, I think the word Buddhism can be associated with like big statues or burning monks. You know, there's those images of monks lighting themselves on fire or like the worship of Buddha. But as I understand Buddhism, it's it's a uh, it's pretty scientific. It's it's pretty grounded. Uh, you don't believe anything that you you're you're not told to believe anything that you don't decide to believe in. Uh, I mean, in that sense of the word, I'm Buddhist too. Although I tend not to identify, I tend not to express myself as being Buddhist because I feel like I am judged or I I'm like, oh, he's the Buddhist guy. He must be vegan. I'm not vegan. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? Like there's kind of those labels and. Yeah. Are you Buddhist too? In that, in that, uh, it, it, maybe, you know, if I said, are you Buddhist? How would you say, what would you say? (laughs) If I had to pick a like spiritual leaning, then I would say I lean towards that. Got you. Um, I love what you said about just like deciding to believe in something like deciding Mm. your beliefs. Cause I feel like a lot of people don't actively choose their beliefs. It's more of like, yeah. Well, you mentioned your, you know, your mom modeling weight behaviors to uh, weight lot weight uh, weight watchers, but you kind of went the opposite way, right? Like it sounded like you, but then you, yeah. So your your parents sort of influenced you, but then you sort of found your own path too. You you got into the my my fitness pal, and then but then you kind of found out what different stuff to believe in. Yes, that's right. Um, I think there was some yeah. rebellion. For, it was like a rebellious phase too mm-hmm. for me and but it led to me discovering like what I wanted to actively choose to believe but mm-hmm. honestly speaking of my mom she's amazing and sure, sure. sorry <laughs> sorry mother <laughs> no, 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 no. I yeah. wanted to tell you like, yeah. she she's come such a long way in her journey with mm. food that like she I introduced her to intuitive eating I don't know like two years ago less than that it clicked with her immediately. Oh my gosh. She loves it. Like that's fully her lifestyle now. I had a dream last night, Jared, that she went back to dieting and I oh was my. devastated. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's like one of the most fulfilling things in the world. Like that oh. month I became an intuitive eater. It's so rewarding. Oh my gosh. Work, like, and still have a dieting mom. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, cause oftentimes the story I hear is sort of the opposite. Like, Hey, I'm into intuitive eating. My family is totally not into it and I can't bring it up with them. And we've learned to just not talk about it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's one of the hardest parts of the work that I think we do is like, how do we support our clients in their anti-diet path when they don't, when they're, they're around a dieting family or like, all of the people around them are dieting. Like we have to find some creative ways sometimes for them to have like support and community. Yeah. And um, we are that only person for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, One quote that just popped into my mind was uh, I think the Buddha said we can never repay our parents or like we're, we're, our parents have done so much for us, raising us and so forth. Like he said that it's bringing the Dharma to them, right. Is like one way of, of evening that out of, of, of giving back um like the truth uh, dharma dharma is another interesting word but you know intuitive eating right like you don't need to diet there's a different way that's based on you know self-care curiosity authenticity instead of self-control i feel like that gift is i mean priceless right i mean you're right yeah that i got my right. my parents into yoga too or so yeah. I, I feel sort of sort of good about that as well what a joy. Um, yeah like they have um they we can talk about yoga they're a little bit more connected I I think um you know and so I I do feel some uh some uh it makes me smile or makes me feel warm you know like oh I, yeah. I did, did that for my parents like I don't know it, it, I kind of believe in reincarnation so like hey like you know like they'll they'll take that with them in the next life (laughs) so powerful and I feel like on the way to self-actualization like the ladder that I see is like Mm. 
just like slowly, like gradually improving somebody's quality of life so that they can even like access like what self-actualization would look like to them. Mm. It's like about enriching their quality of life and taking them to another level, like one piece at a time. Maybe it's yoga, maybe it's intuitive eating. Um, Let me ask you, do you feel like you are a self-actualized person? I mean, I, 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 I hate to be cocky, but I, I mean, it sounds cocky to say yes. Um, So I'll say a qualified yes. Like, I feel like, I feel like I know who I am kind of, I'm a writer. I'm more introverted. I got some stuff. I, you know, I I probably drink a little too much wine. I don't know. You know, like I got some stuff I'm, I can be, I can be calm, but I can be weird. I can, um, I can, you know, I feel like I, I, I've, I, I, through, through years of therapy, through lots of psychedelics, through being a monk for a long time, I feel like I'm kind of understanding who I am and I, I feel called. I feel like I'm on a mission. Um, I feel like I'm doing something good. You know, it, I guess that self-actualization, right. Embracing your imperfections and being okay with them and, and uh, having a purpose and, and um, some sort of meaning, I guess, mm-hmm. in that sense of the word self-actualization, I'd, I'd say yes. Um, I mean, certainly like, I'm definitely like, I look up to, Barack Obama, right? I'm like, oh wow, like holy shit, like, I, you know, I, or other people that that are, I feel like models for me. Even Michelle Obama, Oprah, I don't know, like people, Hal Elrod, uh, you know, I got many models of people that I aspire to be like, and I, maybe there's levels of self actualization. What, <laughs> what about you? I love the question, Maria. Uh, can I, I turn, can I turn it around to you and get you your can. perspective on it? Yeah. I was not surprised by your answer. That feels mm. really aligned. Um, and I would have answered it the exact same way, minus the psychedelics and the monk part. Ah. <laughs> Everything else, I was like, that's how I would answer that question. Uh, I think I am uh, more self-actualized now than I have mm. ever been. Yeah. And I think I am well on my way to becoming mm-hmm. more and more self-actualized, but uh-huh. I agree with you. I like the idea of there being levels. Mm. Yeah. I feel like, and I feel like something, the authenticity of you is that's like your thing sort of as I, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like I've done a fair amount of these interviews and I, I'm thinking that every person has like a genetic blueprint of self-actualization, right? Like they kind of have their own unique way of being self-actualized. And I feel like that's like something about you is like, you know, like you're about that unique way of being in the world, whether it's you or like helping people find their own authentic, unique, whatever their, their way of being in the world. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Thank you. That, that was such a cool thing of you to say. I, because here's, here's why I like the idea of levels too, Jared, is because I think I'm going to look back, like, as I get older and be like, mm-hmm. I thought I was self-actualized. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, oh, I do nothing. <laughs> right? But yeah, I exactly. Yeah. But isn't that, what, isn't that why we're here? Yeah. To keep exploring the mysteries of the universe and seeing, like, a greater understanding of the yeah, going deeper into the mysteries and seeing how everything is connected more and more. And, um, and then, yeah. Uh-huh. So. Indeed. Yeah. Um, authenticity, uniqueness. What is, so I think we've touched upon authenticity some, but like it, what, do, how do you define authenticity? Like, and when did you start to really value this aspect? Hmm. I haven't thought about this that much. So this might not be that articulate. Go for it. <laughs> so, so my, my dad was a politician and I, I watched him hmm. stand up for what he believed in and do good for other people. And my parents like always encouraged that and my three brothers and I to like stand up for others and advocate for ourselves and for me like I feel like that just really informed the way I see the world Mm -hmm. and so 
like I only was raised to know like how to just like speak my truth, I guess. Mm. And like, call out, you know, things that needed to be called out. To me, mm. that's what authenticity is. It's like, mm. if something comes straight from your heart and soul, mm. I don't know. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Straight from the heart and soul. I think there's, you don't seem satisfied with your own answer. I'm just not sure. I'm still working mm. through it. I think in my yeah, head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because it feels cliche to talk about like being genuine and being authentic. Like I feel like those are buzzwords. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And even self-care, I, I feel like can be, you know, oh, so like, no, you know, it feels or, like fluffy to even talk about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, interestingly, when, when you said politician, I, I, I was thinking like, oh, he, it was fake. It was, it was, uh, cause I think from my experience, my, um, the reason I love therapy and emotions and so forth or whatever is because, um, you know, my upbringing was the, the opposite of that. It was very, um, distant, I'll, I'll say. Um, and so, you know, for me, like connecting and learning how to feel my body, like these have been my Achilles heels, right. Uh, learning to have a normal relationship with food and, and, um, be in my body. Like that's been my greatest weaknesses. And so through all those things, the monk and everything, I've kind of healed those aspects and now they're very valuable to me. Um, but it seems like kind of this authenticity has maybe been with you from the, something that's been part of you for a long time. I think that's right. And I feel like that is, that is what others would say about mm. me. So I feel like you're reading that right. But I, I, yeah, I think when I say politician, like a lot of people would take that the other way, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. like disingenuous or something. But that's not how, like, that's not how I viewed my dad's career when I was yeah, young. yeah, yeah. You see, it seems like he was speaking out and encouraging you to speak up and yeah, to say what's right and yeah. I, I definitely see how that falls into intuitive eating and or or, or how it doesn't work with dieting because with dieting you're not listening to your body you're on a 1200 calorie diet which is going to starve anyone i mean it's crazy i hate it, it get pissed off at my fitness pal that's their default i think that's their default uh you know setting know. right like a lot of control it's like that's their default 1200 isn't that like, devastating it's like this is a big app this is a yeah. millions of people use this app and it's their default Jared, this, is the, so, this is the social justice part huh it is but right? like, also what i was saying earlier <laughs> of when i just have to be like how does anyone think this is acceptable <laughs> yeah like i know i know i know but we get caught up i remember in wrestling you know like oh yeah like it's a couple days before the tournament so time to stop eating or, or or and it wasn't i it, i didn't it was just what everyone else did right i mean i didn't really question it um so I, I, I see both perspectives, right? I'm sure you do too, right? It's how could 1,200, like how could anyone think that? And then I'm sure from your own experiences, you can kind of see like, oh yeah, I fell into that trap as well. Completely. And you yeah. know what? I think it goes back to that sh idea of like short-term results because I almost think that like yeah. a lot of people know mm. that 1,200 calories is starving and they mm -hmm. don't care because mm -hmm. it means that it's a promise to be thin. Yeah. I think about this too. And like there, I wasn't thinking about doing this restrictive eating for my, the rest of my life. It was, it was like to get through wrestling season. And I, maybe people do that as well. Like I'm just going to restrictively eat. I'm just going to tidy up this little corner of my life. I'm going to, you know, lose a few pounds and then I'll figure out, I'll, I'll figure things out from there sort of. What it, if yes, but what is so dangerous is how companies like my fitness pal have made this seem acceptable and like even they like disguise it as healthy. Yeah. That's what is so dangerous. I mean, you know, working in eating disorders. Yeah. How how dangerous it is that like what we see as the norm, what we see as acceptable is so disordered. Yeah, it really is. It, it's we've we 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 as a culture are um we're, we're struggling with, with food and, mm -hmm. and, uh, guilt with food and, um, you know, morality with food is, 
it, it's, a, it's a big struggle. Um, you know, I know. Yeah. So the social justice piece, um, I don't know. How do, how do you manifest that aspect in your business or in your, I don't know if you're volunteering or, or like, how do you, maybe, maybe one-on-one -on -one client work is, is social justice as well. I don't like for me, I, I, I sort of, there's this bridge that I, you know, the individual work is great, right? That's, that's honestly, quite frankly, why I am like CBT a lot uh, for working with people. It's, it's very individual. It's very clear. You know, it's very simple. Uh, I just tell people essentially to journal right before you eat. And it, it brings a lot of her personal, personal responsibility and so forth. But I mean, sometimes I think about like my greater mission, you know, like how does, how does, while helping individuals is great, like there is, it's not quite the same as the collective. It's not quite the same as um, social justice or, or standing up for, um, uh, you know, standing up for something bigger than the individual, I guess. Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts on like integrating the social justice and, and how do you sort of go about it or how do you explore social justice? That's a good question. I think right now, maybe I am more individual about it than I will be in the future. I have a lot of ideas and dreams about what I'll do in the future to make a bigger impact um, and to like affect social change. But I mean, I think like, for example, Evelyn and Elise do a great job of affecting social change, like even just through their book mm. and how mm. like to write a really powerful book, mm. I feel is a wonderful way to affect social change. Mm. That's something that I think about doing in the future. But right now, I mean, it's all a ripple effect though. The one-on-one work, one -on -one work yeah. is so important. Sure, sure. You think sure. about how that will affect generation and generation and generation, you know, just like changing one person. It's not just changing one person. Yeah. Um, but, you know, right now I'll, I'll create, um, you know, video trainings within my small like online community. And again, like, it's just right now, I think about creating awareness, like in writing blogs, like, people don't even know what health at every size is like people yeah. don't even know what this stuff is yet. And yeah. so right now I'm just kind of like planting the seeds where, where I am now in the, these little communities that I've access to, but mm. I know that down the line, mm. I'm going to end up doing something more. I mean, Jared, you're doing podcasting, blogging, like so much. Sure, like, sure, sure, sure. Like, sure. Like, that's like a lot. Uh, no, that you're right. Um, There is, there is some, um, there is a social awareness thing that that is that I got it. I should give myself credit for. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's true. It's true. I, I I'm doing a I'm doing a lot. I love I love working on this stuff. Right. I I genuinely like working on this. I that's probably another flaw, right? Or another self part of my self actualization, right? Like I work too much, but I like it, and you know, accepting all that. Um, Speaking of accepting, I want you to talk more about acceptance and commitment therapy because I think CBT is really popular, but can you talk more about acceptance and commitment? Yeah, there is that uh, acceptance and I mean, yeah, acceptance and commitment therapy, kind of that's like the AC, ACT, yeah. Um, it, it, I think it, um, I, I, I'm not super duper familiar with it, right? Acceptance, commitment, there is that whole like, I mean, so what I, do know about it and what I'm familiar with it about it is like it, there it, when you move I, I've heard of it like um you're on a train track right and off to your sides off to either side of you are like like you're gonna fall off the train track right or, or there's distractions to the left and right and so it's really helpful if you have like a a thing you're committing to you're like a train moving forward you're you're on the train track you're moving forward and so that really helps with the process of acceptance, um, like moving towards a, a vision. And I think this is where your curiosity and values come in. Like, hey, I'm, I'm moving towards something I want. Um, part of what I want means being more, I think when people have a conversation and they, they see like, hey, I wanna, I wanna have food with my family. I want to not be so trapped by these thoughts. I think people start to see like part of this means ex accepting being willing to uh have some difficult emotions and so i think without that without that vision it's very hard to accept those difficult feelings but with the vision it's it's easier to to feel them to let yourself feel them is that i think that's the word acceptance to me is letting yourself feel 
you know, letting yourself feel. Mm, yeah. yeah. Right. I think there's something, I don't know. Cause I, acceptance. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about yoga. <laughs> in yoga. Like in yoga, you really have to surrender a lot of times. Right. And like, to me, that's what acceptance is. is mm. It's like surrender and yoga, like teaches us through physical poses, how to do that and how mm-hmm. that can translate mentally. I feel like people can be scared of surrender. Oh, oh yeah. Of course, I guess, right? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's like dieting is this false sense of control. And so yeah. intuitive eating is scary because they think they're giving up control and that feels mm-hmm. like surrender. But yeah, no, that comes up a lot. Yeah. yeah. In reality, it's restoring their control ultimately, but yeah. It does come up. I feel it. So um you mentioned the course on your website, self-actualization is uh the fifth fifth one like where where can people find you and and everything online thank you for asking my website is just my name it's www.mariascrementi.com and that's a good way to get in touch with me and find out like more about the courses things like that but we also have a really fun online community it's called make peace with food and that's a good place I'm usually hanging out on Facebook I'm not good at Instagram um are you good at Instagram no I'm good at Google yeah. I blog and I send out emails. Uh, yeah, you send out really good emails. Thank I'm you. On email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, 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 yeah. I wish I was more inclined to be more active on social media. I know that it's definitely possible to connect and you know do this whole thing via social media, but um, yeah, I don't know. But this is something that I, I don't know, it's kind of embracing, hey, I don't really want to do this, but also leaning into maybe there's some avoidance there or I don't know. Good awareness. Yeah, yeah, good good awareness. <laughs> okay, so that's Maria Scrimenti, S-C-R-I-M-E-N-T-I. Did I get you that? It. Yeah, Maria Scrimenti.com, make peace with food. That's on Facebook, I'm assuming. Yes, it is. Yeah, and I love your website too, from the intro video to the... Uh, layout I mean it's real um simple and and clean and you got a lot of space you know it's like it's yeah. it's like it's uh not too many words and all that um yeah I can tell that the you know yeah separate conversation for another time but just like the whole business journey of how business leads to self-actualization as well I mean Ooh, for sure you know what I mean like if I look back at my website like years ago and like the stages it's been through I feel like the website growth is equally interesting. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My website looks nothing like what it looked like at the beginning, but now like I like to feature my clients' stories more mm. than ever. And they've been so generous in writing like full on blogs or creating full on videos of like mm. their journey through intuitive eating. And that I think is so impactful for people who like if people are landing on my website, a lot of times there's some level of interest, right? Around like going on this journey. And so for them to see other people who've already gone on it and had a lot of success, I think is like one of the most impactful things. Yeah. Um, I want to wrap up today too, by asking you about your dream and I'll go first to uh, give you some time to think about it. Cause you said a while ago with social justice, like right now you're doing this, but you have these dreams for the future, maybe a book or there may be a book. I didn't quite say that, but um, so You'll go next, but as you wrote about the uh, client videos on your website, I was reminded of a, a dream of mine, and that's to like have a thousand, uh, you know, client full-on interviews. I got a couple on the website right now already, where it's like, "Hey, I'm done with binge eating," like, and then just like, no, no, no secrets withheld. Like, how'd you do it? What happened? What was it like? What came up for you? Like, just like full-on, like all all secrets revealed. But I want like a thousand of them. And um, that'd be a dream of mine to have like a, a, either a playlist or some sort of spot where they're all like accumulated and then people could just like click through and be like, holy shit, like, you know, like it's possible. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like a a dream of mine. That's amazing. I can't wait to see you create that. (laughs) I love that on your website, Jared, the videos of people who used to binge five days a week and now they don't binge at all. Like it's like, this is possible. Well, you have to let people know this is possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Um, Marianne Williamson has this quote I like. That's like, "There's we're all assigned a corner of the universe that is ours to transform." Mm. And I think about that. It makes me feel like mm. if I ever feel like I'm not doing enough, I'm like, no, I'm working with like my community right now, and like I'm 
I'm doing what I can with the, the people I have access to at the moment, but I know down the line, like, yeah, I would like to write a book, um, maybe some speaking engagements. My, I went to grad school for college counseling. So I've always thought about doing something at a university. Um, I'm not sure what exactly that would look like, but I also think Jared, we need to create a Netflix special. We need to put something uh, on Netflix about intuitive eating and how better resize. Oh, they should totally do it. I think Evelyn and uh, Elise would be crushing it there. I they're know. pretty charismatic. They're, they're excellent. Um, you know, speakers and, and good with people and, and their, their, um, their humanity and wisdom. Like when people ask them questions, they like go like 10 layers deep or like they, they've, they've have so much experience. It's like when someone asks them, they're, they just are, ah, it's hard to describe, <laughs> but anyways, they're, they're able you. to like, just answer the question from like the heart of where you're asking, but you didn't even know you were asking the question in that way. I mean, I feel like they would be so good on Netflix. Um, I don't know how like the movie would be. I, I agree. There should be a documentary. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Speaking, I think you'd crush it as a speaker. I don't know. Got mm, I prefer to write like verbal process. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> my forte. Yeah. However, I, I just am thinking about like, what's in the best interest of the world? How can you reach the most people and that kind of thing? And, and being authentic to yourself, right? I mean, if you don't want to speak and you want to write, that's important too. Yeah. Oh, and the book would maybe reach more people. As yeah. Well. I, I see, don't I know. I grew, up in, <laughs> I grew up in musical theater. Like I should be uh, fine in front of people. Yeah. I mean, but I don't know. It changes over time. Did you see on, um, I'm curious if you saw the Headspace um, mm. on Netflix, the guide to meditation. Oh, I, I'm familiar with Headspace. Love uh, Andy uh, Puttycomb, something like that. Yeah, he's um, great. yeah um, and I did see that they were partnering with Netflix to put out like a, you know, a meditation. I didn't see it though. Have you seen it? Yeah, it was good. Their animations are so adorable, but it's like eight episodes of just different uh, types of meditation. And ooh. I've recommended it to my clients. I wonder ooh. if you were your clients. I'm going to, I'm going to make an email speaking of that. And I'll, I'll send that out in an email, just letting people know I'll watch it first and uh, I'll watch an episode and then email about it. Thank you. I think that's a well, really cool thing. Um, I mean, I'm so happy like that meditation is getting more mainstream. I, I mean, I feel like for me, I, I feel like journaling and, and meditation are like, um, necessary oxygen, you know, it's like, it's like that level of necessariness. Um, I got like three journals behind me. I always journal. Um, uh, oh, I had a thought. <sighs> what was my thought? Um, uh, we said, oh yeah, meditation I, is becoming more mainstream. Yeah. I, I don't know. It was just, I'm glad there was some like when in the monastery, like there was a lot of poo pooing sort of like, they want this very like, you know, oh, they're doing, they're doing meditation for, um, uh, well, the, the typical example that the, the slippery slope example is like, Hey, people on wall street are trying to meditate. So they make more money. Mm -hmm. And like, we don't want meditation to be used to make money. And I've always been sort of the opposite. Like, Hey, like, let's just get it out there. And you know, um, if, if, if the more people that are exposed, like it's just going to be good overall. So anyways, that was like my, my side tangent thought about yeah, no, I was <laughs> hearing that. Yeah. Like I support meditating to make money because I know that like by meditating, you'll, you'll be more aware. You're going to be more aware of your own ethics. You'll be more aware of, you know, just a lot of good stuff comes from uh, looking inward and everything. Absolutely. And like, weirdly with journaling, I, I've always journaled, but yeah. I've been journaling a lot lately, like extra. And it was validating to hear you say that it's like air because I'm like, okay, I'm not journaling too much. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there's so many different ways to journal too. Like, I mean, if you just want to write out your feelings or you make your priority list or you write out, you know, what I have people do is write out their thoughts before they eat. Right. Or, or, uh, gratitude or um uh, how do you how do you journal naturally what always it is top of mind for me is gratitude like I always mm. end up starting with gratitude mm. and then I think I do maybe like some mantra affirmation type things mm. I have something in particular to process and I'll just start writing that out mm. um I do like definitely the morning 
pages, like brain dump kind of thing, but mm. it always ends up like being, okay, I focus on what I, what I'm grateful now, what I want more of, um, and, and how I can like sort of multiply the gifts that I already have and create mm. a bunch of there. Oh, but yeah, I've always journaled in the morning, but now I'm starting to journal a lot at night. And mm. that again is like gratitude, setting intentions, mm. um, kind of pep talking myself. Mm. And what, mm. What oh, I love it. I love it. Um, I, yeah, no, I'm curious, like how I've heard, like, there's different ways of gratitude journaling. I want to gratitude journal more, but I don't know. I just don't really do it as much. I'm curious, like, do you write down, like, I've heard you write down your top three things. I've heard that you, it, I've heard that sometimes it's good to write down, like, um, I'm glad my, by focusing on the negative, like, I'm glad the world didn't blow up or something like that. Like, or maybe just writing down, I've heard, I don't know, gratitude, It's it, it comes to me, but it's not like my go-to journaling, and I sort of wish it was. Mm -hmm. How do you gratitude journal? Yeah, I think at, at first it was confusing because I was like, there's so much to be grateful for, mm. and also, like, where's the line? Like, what do I, okay, so I'm grateful for, like, my car and my family and my friend. I'm like, I could be here all day. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> But I think now what I do is I just think about like, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm like, just the things that, that hit my heart the most, like, mm. wow, like my, my safe and beautiful place to live. Like, mm. sometimes I'm just like, I don't take this for granted for a second. And that's mm. what I am writing about. But sometimes mm. it's like, again, like sometimes it's the things that I want to be intentional about like not taking them for granted especially if I want to multiply them like I write down all the names of my current clients mm. and I'm like so I don't take for granted the fact that this person trusted me to oh, yeah and yeah. I want more clients so I write <laughs> I write you know I have gratitude oh, I love it I love it I I, th I can see myself doing that that feels good to me I like yeah. that. I've never heard of that writing down current clients and and so forth there even you know people I mean I've heard of writing down people of course but um like people that you're grateful for and whatnot but um I think that's cool especially too because obviously I'm trying to grow my business too so like the more energy I would focus on like positive clients and, and appreciation you think it would like kind of manifest more and more you know Right. Especially to like, I feel like what you focus on, you create more of. Yeah. So if uh -huh. I look at my current bank account, and even if I want my bank account to be 10x, then mm -hmm. if I can say I'm grateful for what I have right now, I'm so thankful that this mm. is me and I fully mm. expect that more is my way Oh to my gosh, out. give me yeah. the goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> give me the goosebumps. <laughs> That's it. Oh my God. Okay. Let's let's end on goosebumps. I like ending on goosebumps. Okay. Okay. Um, how do we wrap this up? How do we land this plane? You have to watch girl. Um, that's like the. It's supposed to be. I, I've heard of it, right? They market it as like it's not the new Gilmore Girls. It's different, it's, but it's so it's the best. Um. Anyway, if for any shout out for anybody listening who has seen, <laughs> they'll understand. <laughs> when I talk about Nick Miller's goosebumps walk away. Um, anyway, that's what we're doing is like a goosebumps walk away. So we're ending on goosebumps. I'm down to end on goosebumps. <laughs>